I'm going to do some hair color for you today. And we're going to talk about how to get those really cool colors. And I mean, like, not cool, but cool, right? Silvery, silver green, those type of things. But also to place some warmth in there, a little drama, depending on how she wears her hair. So we're going to um, play with double toning. So toning to get that really cool ashy tone or that silvery tone or the greenish tone. So I'm going to explain how we do that with our Shades EQ gloss and I'll get back to you. Yeah, awesome. this is the shape. What we're really uh, looking at right now is a lot of everybody seeing the shag and uh, for some of us that are really daring going back into the mullet. So we're going back into kind of getting a vibe on the two of them. So I'm going to take you, show you how to do this shape, a couple of few and literally three easy steps. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you for a minute about how many of you got dark haired clients, yes? Right, those clients that live like in that level three to five zone, kind of medium to that lightish brown. Right before they get to blonde, they go, ah! <laughs> and they pump the brakes because they maybe have a desire to step there, but maybe not. I'm going to be doing something very simple, working on the top of the head because as a general rule, everything we color on the top of the head is going to give us our side to side movement. Everything we color below the top of the head is just going to collapse and be our foundation. So I'm going to go in and work on a technique here called that way because we're gonna use over direction with our placement. Working a lot with shags now, lots of mullets, but taking the shag and the mullet and marrying them together and really going through and layering hair. But it's the way that we're layering hair. It's all about doing things in an uncommon way. So what I'm doing is just taking a diagonal section, you'll see me pinching everything to the top of that diagonal section. But most importantly, guys, it's about understanding that we can do things in a different way and you can still be you. Yes. So important to understand that. Oh. Down a glove. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you know what it's like, Jay, you go through the glove and it's like, ah, oh, like your hand goes right through it. All right, so in order to get these cool Why tones, me? how many of you, what? <laughs> you know how you get, you try to get the gray. If you're trying to get gray in the hair and get it to stay the first time you do it, it looks okay, but there's that little bit of warmth. So what we suggest is do it twice, all right? So if you're going to do it more than once, you do the first one, do it quite soft, but you're going to say maybe use your, um, your 09P, your 09T, but yet now we have a 10 level. All right, so Shades EQ Gloss has a new 10 level. Thank you, Redkin. You asked, we gave it to you. Yeah, so we have a 010N, right? And then we also have a 010VV. So it's a great one to use to cool that hair down first and then add your gray over top of that so that you get that real silvery tone and she keeps that tone. So I'm going to section the back of our hair and just add in this green here and I'll show you how we do the details in a bit. All right, Justin, how are you doing there, brother? I'm doing great. I'm going in here and I'm working, as I said, I'm going to be going in. This is a technique that it can be done on other clients besides brunettes, but I want to dedicate this client. I feel like I'm a DJ out there. This is K9099, redkin.com FM. I want to dedicate this technique that way to all the lovely brunettes out there in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Left-handed Aquarius Latin here. Okay, uh, focus, y'all. This is your career. Okay, you came here to learn. If you want to learn more, come see us at the Redkin Exchange because we're only here with you for a short time right now. But what I'm doing, I'm working on the top of the head. Everybody throw up deuces, even the cool people. That means peace if you're a hippie. Okay, thank you. All right. I'm using a diagonal, I mean, I'm using a rectangle on top of the head, no wider than my peace sign. So it's from the top point of the head coming forward, no wider than my peace sign, just a rectangle right down the top of the head because everything is going to spill from that place. I'm over directing to the back and I'm going to be putting stripes on the hair, but because of over direction, my friends, we're not going to maintain those stripes once it goes back to its home because this hair, I have it in its place now, but would you agree once it lives in its home, it's not going to live in this sectioning, right? So when it lives where it goes back home, we're going to get some movement with it and it's not going to be traditional stripes as we would see. So it's a little more commercial. It's a little more chic 
And because we're only putting it on topical, I'm going in and using City Beats right now, which is just basically conditioner with color, right? It's in the Shades EQ family. It's all acidic. It's going to last about 12 shampoos relative to what you put it on. So I'm going in with dilutions of the pure colors and putting them on topical. So all it's going to do on that brown hair is just fade away. Just fade away. Just fade away. Fade away, like some of you wish right now. I wish he would just fade away. I wish he would just fade away. <laughs> Christopher, how you doing there, brother? <laughs> hey, I like to have fun. I got to have fun up here. If we're not having fun, we're not learning. And That's we, right. We That's believe right it, Red. Can learning with emotion is life changing, and learning without emotion, Christopher, is just forgettable. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. So first of all, um, just to see and to recap what happened in the back there. So far, the way you start this shape is what I did is I took a V section, and the way you take, the whole purpose behind that V is to keep the length in the back and then to keep that veil down on the sides. So everything was taken in that V and we took everything right to center back. So if you'll see right to here, everything went to center back on both sides. We elevated it just horizontally and we cut just a diagonal line in it, just like this. And then, now, you'll see in here on the sides, the way we cut the sides and the way that happened was these side sections to get that veil on the side, we took out just a very small section and we just elevated that up, just elevated that section up horizontally and cut it, or elevated it vertically and cut it horizontally just so what that does on the side is it collapses and then you have some length that you can fall over and falls over. And what that does is it collapses the whole shape. So in that, I'm just going to continue on the top. I went from that side and then angled up just with this angle just in the front and collapsed the shape just into one. So all compressed cutting. It's so awesome at the moment to see layering in a lot of the cuts that we're doing. Yes, you're seeing a sense of geometrics, but you know there's some hidden secrets inside of that. So let's talk about what we're doing here with this particular shape. We're taking a diagonal back section from the corner of the eye all the way to the right corner back. Placing a box on the head, you'll find that right corner back. That's going to sit a haircut up so it actually tilts. So you're going to see some length here in the front corner, and you'll see some length in this back corner here. So rather than me playing a diagonal game trying to create that, all I'm doing is cutting to the shape of the head, bringing everything to a stationary guide, and creating that whole shag effect. What's beautiful about the way that we're elevating the hair, we seem to be elevating a lot of the hair vertically. By elevating the hair vertically, it's giving me this short to long sense. Without cutting, without going in and doing this and pinwheeling around these shags. So going through, working with the fine teeth of the comb to create tension, so I create a softer edge. That's important. And then working right to and watching the grain of the hair as we are combing it. So we're keeping the grain consistent. In other words, watch this now. Come in tight, love. I don't want to comb in this direction. And then I don't want to comb it back this direction. We want to keep the grain the same. So we're aware of where we're over-directing, how we're elevating it, and then we're cutting a finger angle that is contoured to the shape of the head. As I'm working, I'm working with our One United, which happens to be one of my favorite products. Why? Because I love using it as a cutting lotion. If you have fine hair, simply place some in the water bottle so you dilute it, and you've got an awesome cutting lotion. So I'm going to continue to work here, Lori, and what's interesting about this is the color, how you combine the cut and the color is what gives you the straight strength of the season. Yeah, it does. You know, Sam, you're using diagonals, and most of the time, colorists, mm -hmm. as colorists, we use diagonals to ha make movement in the color. I'm actually decided that I always use diagonals, so let's do something different. So we're going to use squares. All right, so if everybody put their hand out like this, I'm going to start with my first square like so. I'm going to take my next, um, my sections, and I'm going to go along the side and along the front, so I'm working around one side of the square. That first one is going to be my gray slice, okay? Along the side and in the front. Then I'm going to take my next one and I'm gonna go along the side of the other side of the square and the front, and I'm gonna use yellow. Then I'm going to go to the other side again, so I'm working back and forth on either side of the square and in the front, 
and I'm going to use a small slice of black. That is going to give me this movement that we have in this color. So whether she wears it all down, or she wants a little more drama, or she wants a little more warmth. Now I'm just using these colors because I really, I don't know, they make me, me, me happy. I love putting yellow in anything for some reason. But I love the um, movement that it gives, even though it's a very solid shape, but the shape doesn't necessarily move either. So we're going to just work with our, um, our colors working around one side of the square and in the front, around the other side and in the front, we're gonna bring all the hair back. So let me just keep going here. Awesome, thank you, Lori, for that. I'm going in and working through. A couple things I would point out for you as you're doing this. If I want my lines to stay as clean as they could be, I want to make sure I extend some of the color on the outside because that's what's going to read through. I prefer to use a mesh, right, than a foil because it's going to stick a little better and I see what I'm doing. Think of it like this. When I'm doing this, I think about this is going to be the shell, right? We have an interior of our hair color. Would you agree? Or if we have layers, we have a whole lot of that. But if we have long layers or one length, it's kind of like a shell. So basically what I'm doing is I'm coloring the whole shell. Everybody with me? Even the cool people back there? You know who you are, sitting in the back of the bus for the field trip, right? So that shell that hangs over, if my lines touch, if my lines all touch with color, does it make sense that my shell is all solid, yes or no? Right? It might be like stained glass and not a solid line of color that we're creating, but it's all the same. When I want that shell to be the same, Sammy, I go ahead and touch those colors there. But when I want it to be a little softer, have a little more movement, or almost a double vision to what I created, I leave a little space in between. And if you leave a little space in between, I think of almost like, you know that cloudy day, Christopher, when there's just a little bit of sunlight mm. kind of breaking through? Right. That's all that's happening. So if I want it to look a little softer, if I have a client that's worried about maybe the choices that we're making, I'll leave a little gap. Now, when I say a little gap, I mean no wider than the rat tail of your rat tail, for lack of a better explanation. Does that make sense? Because could you see if you leave too big of a window open, Lori, what's going to happen? It's too much daylight, and it's going to look like you didn't do it on purpose. There's a fine line between genius and what the hell you do. Stick on that side of the line, my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true. Yeah, so in, in just so you can see on this side now, to prep, now how many of you have ever cut dry hair and then after you've done cutting it, you cut the ends wet and then the ends start to spring out on you because it never seems to behave right at the area you cut it? Well, I'll tell you, what I've just really discovered is if I do a blow dry and I use the uh, no blow dry and I use the bossy uh, blow, no blow dry, blue dry, just with a... With a um, uh, um, a paddle brush, and you've got this beautiful finish on this. Now, I want to run to just one quick thing beside you is here is you'll notice I cut everything to center back. And I want to give you a, an easy way that when you're in the salon that saves time, and rather than having to resection on every time that you section it, all you have to do is once you're back at center back, then just take and push the spine of your comb, push the spine of your comb right over top of that section, right to there. And then you move just to the next one, right like that, and then the next one, and then the next one. See, so you're right over top of each section as you cut it, and then you get this nice rounded shape that moves just around the section and makes all of the hair the same length. And that's what creates that point on the back. Now, I've got that, that on the side. Now, all I'm going to be doing now is in the, for this front section, where are we? There we are. I want to take that front piece. And I want to throw that weight just over to one side. So I'm going to take that top piece that we have, because I want this to have a nice short crappie feel, is I'm just going to leave that just a slight bit longer. I'm going to take vertical sections, and I'm going to come over top of that and just cut that corner off so that hair tends to move all the way over to the side. So Sammy, would you agree that sometimes when we're doing that diagonal sectioning, as soon as that does, you kind of round the shape out? Yes, of course. I think that's important to understand what lines do, Chris, for vertical versus horizontal versus diagonal, which is what I happen to be working with here. So this diagonal section, let's take a look at it and allow me to show you what I did. Here's that diagonal section that I took. So if we look at this, and I'm coming to you, love. I need you to get this really tight right here. Okay? a girl. Good job. Give her a round of applause, guys, for what she's doing for us here. Woo! So I took this diagonal line from that corner of the eye here all the way to the corner back. 
then each section that I took stayed parallel to that. Each section was elevated up to that stationary position. Now think about this. The hairline, it kind of drops down lower here, then it comes up around the ear, and it drops down long here. So what's happening is this hair is traveling a farther distance at the point of that sideburn hairline area. It's traveling a further distance to get to the cutting position. That's what's giving me that length in front of the ear. Think about it. Diagonal back, I'm forcing the hair back here behind the ear to travel even further to get this position. So here's what I'm trying to share with you. Take the simple route. Simplicity is so valuable today. Take the simple route rather than going in and tacky, taking this area here and detaching it and then detaching this area and coming in and freehand it. Stay with the discipline. We find that we're getting back into discipline. The next thing we need to do is add value behind the chair. My friends, price is what they pay and value is what they get. So let's ask ourselves, what value are we adding behind the chair? Now it comes time for me to blow dry this. I'm going to ask for Louise's, her phone, place it on my station on a monkey tripod, push video, videotape me actually teaching her to blow dry, how to blow dry her hair. When we are done, what do you say we take to her phone, hand it back to her and tell Louise, Louise, you got your own blow dry, your own YouTube tutorial, and guess what? You're the star, I'm the star, and I'm with you on your vanity every morning. Every morning, guys. Now, that's an experience, and that's what we need to start thinking about behind the chair, creating an experience at the salons now. So as I'm doing my horizontal or my square lines, when I put my foil down, I actually want to lay my color right on the foil. So you'll see that my brush goes right parallel with the foil and leaves a lot of color behind. Then when I take my section that's horizontal across the front of that square, when I lean it back, it sticks to it. So I have much more control as I'm working. So as I'm working, it just applying my um, color with my brush parallel to my um, hair strand. So I really leave a lot of product behind and my saturation is underneath my section and on the top of my section. So I get a perfect saturation. All right, let me do along the side here. All right, Jay, now it's your hands on. <laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everybody pull out your head from under your head. <laughs> Pull out your little color brushes. I need your mind. I'm just playing. Okay, so how many of you honestly, by what I'm doing, are like, oh yeah, that's cool, but I'd never do it. Go ahead, by round of applause, it's okay. Be honest, okay? Thank you, some of you liars. I say that with love, liars, okay? And that's okay. I understand that the work I do is not for everybody. I'm like tequila. Some of you love it, some of you don't. That's okay. Right? I still put it out there. That being said, what I would say to you is sometimes it takes a weird technique to get the end result. Right? Sometimes it takes something that isn't so uniformed or so normal to get what we want. Because the reality is when I do things like this look on my clients, they'll pay a lot of money. And it doesn't look like the stripes that I show you here, but it looks more like the oil slicks that you kind of see and more prismatic color in that. But it's also relative to taste. Would you agree? Because if we go in and we put colors that are too, too strong, shame on us. Because we're the pros and we know better, right? So we need to customize our color, make couture color for each client. Don't do ready to wear. Don't do off the rack color. I don't want to just bleach and tone everybody that wants a bright red or a violet or a pink. I want to customize their look for them. I want to put them in the best position so that it's going to fade out and look good three weeks after they leave me as well as the day that they leave me, Christopher. Right? And it's all about taste. We believe at Redkin that you could have your hair color whisper, talk, or scream to the world. It's relative to who you are and what you want. Some of us want to walk in the room and be like, yes, that's me. And some of us want people to say, like, did you change your makeup? Is it a different sunglasses? What is it about you? Relative to who we are. It doesn't matter how you wear it, but the reality is there's never been a better time to wear hair color. There's never been a better time to be weird. And there's never been a better time to embrace your uniqueness. But what we ask you is, if you're not willing to do it now, my friends, when are you going to do it? Because now's the time to do it. So if you've been waiting for the time, get off your ass and do it. Please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, bud. Truer words were never spoken there. Um, so the idea, and I want to just run on that for a second. I often have clients come up just when we're at the exchange and they talk us, so what do we do to when we want to add prices, change prices, do whatever we do. And um, 
I, I find that uh, the biggest thing is on the consultation is in their consultation, they tend to ask what is it that they, what is it that you want or whatever. My, the way that we've often believed is that the moment that we start to talk to people is just to think of yourself as your designer. If I'm a designer and I want you to think of your favorite designer, whoever that might be, and if you, and if you went up to them and we said, here's $25,000, and you went up to that designer and said, what, what would you do? What would you do? What would you say to that designer? And they might, you might say, well, some people generally would say, well, do whatever you want to do. And they, they, would give you up, they would give you ideas, and you would pick from there. The same thing happens with us, is I think that sometimes our clients take that creativity away from us. I call them the two clients, meaning it's two reds, two, two blue, two round, two, uh, two whatever, and it destroys our creativity. And we've got to get back to that point where we're the designers, whether it's in color or designer finishing, you're actually talking to your person as the designer, giving them the suggestions that come out of your brain. Just like, Jace, uh, just like uh, uh, Justin said, is that he, you know, is you have to sell who you are, not who you think you want to be. And your taste is wider, just pick from this. I want to leave you with just one last thing in here, is I love, to me, my, as a designer, this is my, this is how, when I crop something down and give it that half pixie, half, um, half of a, uh, uh, a shag or mullet, I, I want to make sure that it stands out and that people really notice what it is. So uh, I'm just going to continue on with this. I'm going to just add in just a little bit of wax blast into this, really to show off more texture inside it uh, and to really show off the shape uh, as it gets crappy on top. All right, just going through, I've completed the shape. Just going through, I've completed the shape working with a diagonal line and just pinching everything in. You can see that what I did was worked inside out. So if we're going to layer hair, layer the hair, and then let's come back and get the perimeter, adjust the perimeter. Here's why. Imagine working with a one-length haircut. You're going to layer it. And then what you want to do is you want to go in and you say, I'm going to cut a bowl into it. You go in and cut a bowl, but you know you're going to come back and layer it. You're actually handling the top hair twice to cut the perimeter and now coming back to layer it. I recommend layer that interior, then come back and adjust your perimeter where you want. My product of choice, One United. I used that as a cutting lotion, but look how I went back and sprayed that in, directly into the hair. For shine, just for moisture, 25 different benefits with that product. Making the client understand that product is not an option, it is a necessity. In the teaching process now, I'm videotaping this process. Watch how I'm going to use a diffuser. If I want lift upon these shags and I want it to pop a little bit, take the diffuser off, the dryer, Give it a spin left, right. Now take the blow dryer, place it in on low and low heat. Just let it sit, let it dry. Once it's dry, turn the dryer off, release it, just give it a little spin, and then you're gonna just start to get this volume that you want into that top area. So these are little tips that you have to share with the clients. Remember, it's at-home maintenance that's gonna really success, set up your success. And my friends, it's time for us to change the way we think, the way they, we say, and the way we communicate. The good Lord gave us two of these and one of these. As hairdressers, we need to use these more than we use this. And when we use this, we use it with intent and purpose to help them solve their problems. Give them results. Give them solutions at the end in terms of what the end result is going to be. It's an awesome industry. It's changing. We have to embrace change. And that, as I said before, that doesn't mean that you can't still be you. Because you can, as Justin was talking about, Lori and Chris, it's a matter of taste. And I don't know about you, but my taste has been a journey in this industry over 40 years that I've been in it. Get down, Sammy. Here. And he did. Yeah. There's a lot of experience on this stage, hey? I love that. I love hey, that. man. Yeah. All right. So we've finished up our, our complete look. So we worked with squares and thinking about just where does that hair live? All right. Where does the hair live? So when I push it one direction, I'm going to see more of one color. When I push it another direction, I'm going to see more of another color. The other thing that we started off talking about is getting that cool color. So in order to get that perfect cool color, we need to make sure our palette is exactly the way we want it to be. So we may need to cool it off first and then tone it afterwards. So double toning it so that we get that color that lasts, right? We do that first cool tone and it cools down or neutralizes most of the warmth that you may have in there. The second layer then will give you that complete coolness and anything that wears off 
is the second layer. So you're actually really protecting that color and staying cool. Listen, if you want to know how to get the best cool tones or the best blonde tones, I'm doing a class at the Redkin Exchange called Game of Blondes. All right, and it's everything you wanted to know about a double process, foiling, balayage, toning, all of those things. It's an amazing class. Come and do a hands-on three days with me. It's fantastic. So we, I really look forward to seeing all of you out there. And um, thank you for sharing with us. You know, Lori. Yeah. I almost, when you started talking, I almost went into model mode. I was like, move, boy. Ass hip, ass hip. Uh -huh. I was like, she's, des she's describing <laughs> your hair, you. kid. Yeah, That's my hair. I'm a double toner. Yeah, I used to have too much yellow, and I used 10VV. And I got rid of all my yellow, and then I said, 09P, make me white. <laughs> And that's what I did. Magic <laughs> happened. And it's pretty awesome, but I say that joking, but the reality is the truth of what she's saying. And most of you experience it with pinks. That's where I used to always experience it. I wanted a pink pastel, but as they're walking out, I'm telling them, well, peach is really hotter. <laughs> peach is really the in thing. Have you been to Paris lately? Because peach is really hot. You know what I'm saying, right? And the reality is it's because I had too much warmth in the hair. And when you have too much warmth in the hair, you can't get the silvers, you can't get the grays, you can't get the pinks, you can't get any of that stuff. So that's all we're talking about when she's saying it is cut all that warmth out and have a clean canvas and go to. That's the closest you're going to be to a white canvas. The reality is we're probably never going to get to that place, right? So that being said, Lori's incredible. That class, I'm not a got person, but I am a gob person for Game of Blondes in relation to that. So last thing I'm going to share with you is this is something that I said that I'm going in and I'm utilizing this with my city beats, but we have a new color that's coming out specifically for brunette clients in level three, through three, four, and five call in the color fusion line called Super Glow. And this is something that I utilize that as well. I use it with my Pro Oxide developer, 10 to 40 volume based volume based off what I want. Now what I want to share with you and think about this, I don't want you to think about like a super glow, like an explosion or brightness or the future. It's more of like the glow that you would see from a candle, right? The warmth that you would see from something like that. It's not a bright vivid like that. It's a very chic kind of reflective color, but it's something that you would use on brunette clients who didn't want to bleach in tone. So for something like this that I'm showing you, which is topical, you could very much do something like this. And just to keep it real, as I said, all of the color that we did was only in that front part, right? No wider than my peace sign there. Nothing was in the back, but it's relative to how we color the hair. And that's what we're talking about when we say the surface or the shell when we color this, okay? I'm Justin Isaac, and I approve of everything that I said, Christopher. <laughs> we love it, Justin. We love it. Yeah, you know, just to leave you, I just want to leave you with this. Uh, I don't know about you, but why, what happened to me as, as a young stylist is I was always running behind. It seemed I was always keeping my clients waiting. I know none of you have that problem, uh, but if you have... Are you sure friend, your clients weren't early? You, yeah, but they must have been <laughs> just early. But the reality was this, is I really, I loved cutting. I could always get a shape in. I just really didn't understand what I was doing. And I would go to shows and try to memorize haircuts. And what happened to me is the exchange changed my life. Because I went there and all of a sudden I understood exactly what I needed to do in order to create that shape. And that's where I'm going to challenge all of you, is I really, I'm, and I say it from a wholehearted sense of the place that I believe in, the place that changed all of our lives, and, and that is that they helped us to understand what we do, so we save time. We, we actually make more money because we actually can have add-on services and things we do. So I'm going to challenge you, and I'd love to see you all at the exchange. Uh, and believe me, any one of us that are there, we're going to welcome, welcome you in with, with open arms. We appreciate your time. And yes, give it up for Chris Barron, please, for Chris uh. Barron. Most importantly, we appreciate your time, and it's so important to understand as hairdressers, we must never cease to learn. Just as teachers, we must never cease to learn. There's always something to learn, and I don't know about you, but if we can find 10 ways to cut a shag, let's find 10 ways to do it. It's going to create a sense of enthusiasm behind the chair. Doing the common things in an uncommon way creates a sense of enthusiasm behind the chair. And you have an opportunity to take the information home and make it work for you in your own special way. That's Join right. Join us at the Redkin Exchange.